click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have talked about the important components of silicones and those were that is silicon dioxide, silicon tetrachloride, uh, silicone and now we are going to talk about the important components of silicon that is silicate and zeolite. So what are those and how uh, and when they have been obtained, what are the uses of it, this is what we are going to talk about in this topic. So let us start with that. It is very important for us to understand that as rocks and clays they are made up of that is silicates of aluminium, iron and different materials. So this silicates are nothing but they have constituting a basically an important uh, uh, that is a repeating unit and that is nothing but SiO4-. So there are different kind of uh, that is a uh, uh, silicates that we could obtain and talk about the, the few and that is basically I will write it over here and that is basically feldspar. And let me talk about that is mica. So if we talk about that is feldspar, then uh, the molecular formula of the feldspar is been uh, known to be that is NaAnSi3O8. And talking about that is mica, and this uh, mica is basically it is uh, consisting of potassium as well as aluminium, silicon, and basically oxygen. But it is also found in the form of that is hydrates. Uh, that is so that's the reason that uh, I would write it over here as OH twice. So this is what the uh, I have mentioned over here that is the feldspar and mica. So in both of the uh, silicate, you could find that as uh, the repeating unit or, or the common unit that we could get uh, in both the silicate is basically SiO4 four minus. So this is the common thing that we could get over here. And let me talk about that is all the silicates are basically made up of uh, this group only. So they would consist this group and in this case basically also you could uh, observe that uh, the silicon is having a valency of 4 that is it has been associated with uh, 4 oxygen items. So the reason behind that is uh, the oxygen has a valency of uh, that is uh, 2 so that is the reason that it cannot form a double bond with that of silicon even though we know that the silicon doesn't form a double bond it will always form a single bond. So that is the reason that uh, the structure of uh, that is uh, this kind of silicate would uh, depend on the uh, tetrahedral structure as well as it will depend on that which other different metals and the different other groups that are being associated with the oxygen of that is SiO4. So as we have discussed earlier also that is uh, silicon uh, which has an uh, uh, electronic configuration that we could write it over here in this manner that is 1s2, 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. So here also we could find that is uh, the orbital uh, of uh, P subshell it is basically 3 and 4 as it is 1. So therefore there are 2 uh, electrons over here and uh, 2 electrons on the P subshell. But this one electron uh, which is basically paired over here that could be shifted towards the PZ orbital over here. And that is how we see the valency of uh, silicon is 4. And the structure of that is SiO4 4, 4 minus that is uh, this ion that is it is in the form of uh, uh, that is sp3 hybridized structure and that's the reason that uh, the tetrahedral geometry has been obtained so that is the main thing that i want to talk about so here basically the oxygen are present in such a manner that it forms a tetrahedral geometry so this is how it has been obtained so this is the structure that uh, it has and uh, and along with that of uh, that is uh, oxygen, uh, different kind of metals like uh, aluminium, so as we have discussed in uh, that is mica and in feldspar, aluminium, sodium. So different kinds of uh, that is metal would be associated with this thing and so as to neutralize it. So so therefore this is basically a three dimensional structure where we could get a uh, lots more of uh, you could say like different groups that would be associated with this oxygen and uh, this is how they are very much stable. So that is what I want to talk about that, that is uh, silicates and now let us move on to the next one that is zeolites. So talking about zeolites, uh, let me discuss about this thing that uh, as we have discussed earlier about that is silicon uh, dioxide and in that case we have got to know that that is a very three dimensional structure where each of the silicon is basically forming a tetrahedral geometry and that is what the, it is been also uh, means the silicon is also giving the sp3 hybridized in the basically silicates that we have uh, recently we have got to know. So, in that case, we see this three-dimensional structure that of uh, that is a silicon uh, is whenever we talk about that is silicon dioxide. So it forms a quartz-like structure, and that is it is basically crystalline in nature. But uh, similarly, if we could uh, talk about uh, that is uh, zeolites, 
So CRLs are also obtained by replacing the silicons with uh, aluminium in silicon dioxide. So in this case also basically the silicon is the one that will exhibit uh, that is a tetrahedral geometry. But instead of uh, silicon, a uh, few of the silicon that has been removed and we have to replace it with the uh, aluminium. So that is how basically these zeroids are been obtained and uh, uh, that's the reason that they are known as aluminium silicate. So and uh, those have basically I have discussed about the earlier about the structure of uh, that is a silicate uh, that is SiO4 four minus so that is a tetrahedral geometry so uh, with that help only basically different kind of uh, groups that could attach and different kind of zeroids that could be found so there are two types of uh, zeroids one is natural and one is synthetic so let me talk about uh, the uh, synthetic one so the common zeroid that we know is basically sodium zeroid and that is basically a hydrated uh, alumina silicate and that is basically I would write it over here that is it is Na2O Al2O3 SiO2 and H2O so this is what we have so this is basically known as a sodium zeolite because as you could see that sodium and aluminum the both are the uh, main component or different uh, metals which is associated with uh, silicon as well as different uh, structure of uh, the silicon so that is how uh, the zeolite is and what are the uses of zeolite we are talking about it. Zeroid uh, basically it is uh, this is known as basically uh, permutides so this are basically used in uh, softening of hard water and uh, they have various applications in like they can be used as catalyst also in various reactions so zeroids are not only uh, in terms of they are obtained as uh, stones or they are obtained in the form of rocks but they have also very wide application in chemistry so that's it that is what I want to talk about Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and I hope you will share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.